Welcome back to Bexhill West, I'm James. So in today's video we're going to make a, or make a start of building a 25 tonne brake van. And the reason why I'm doing that is I want to get a few bits of rolling stock made to test the track work that you saw me painting in the last episode. Now this video will be a two part sort of series. There'll be, we'll make a start on it today and then next time we'll finish the job off. Now I often say in my videos these aren't tutorials and it's definitely not a kind of this is how to do it sort of a thing. However, because it's in two parts there's the opportunity leave me a, a comment or send me an email whatever if you've got any questions about anything I've done and then I can pick up on those for the part two and kind of visit viewers questions. Anyway, hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Hi, welcome back. Um, we're in the broom cupboard today and today's project is going to be having a go at building one of these. Now I think this video will just be the first part, we'll finish it off next time. But this is a 15 tonne brake van, a pillbox brake van. I'm going to be putting it together from this kit. It's an old model signal engineering kit. Um, quite straightforward. Now I've made one of these before, so this is my second go at it. Uh, the first one's fine, but I just wanted two. So that's the that's the box of the the kit came in, and the kit is a few white metal parts and two frets uh, etched frets like this. Now I've already assembled one of these, and we'll come on to that in just a minute. But that's the basic layout of components, and we need to cut those out of the fret and assemble them. Now this is the first side is done, and that's sort of like the half of the underframe and the the floor and you can see I've assembled one side of the kit and one of the ends. Now I've done that just to sort of speed this whole process up because we're going to basically repeat it. So we'll get straight into that. So first thing we're going to do is wipe the brass down and I'm just using a bit of IPA here just to help clean it up. It's pretty clean and shiny anyway but it doesn't hurt to, to clean it. Now this will be soldered together and I like to clean the solder at the same time. I didn't film doing so, but it's quite interesting after getting my length of solder and just cleaning it with the IPA how filthy the cloth was afterwards. It was new solder, but it does oxidise, so I think it helps just to clean it up a little bit. Now I'm going to gloss through this bit. I cut these parts out with a combination of my scalpel here and I've got like a an old blade that I've sharpened up like a little chisel that I use just to nip these things out and I have on occasions used um, a little pair of snips as well on here, a little um, like a pair of side cutters. I won't make you watch the whole thing, you get the idea. I'm using a curved blade here and I'm just rolling the curved blade against my bench pin there and it cuts through easy enough. I think the secret is to use a fairly hard sort of backing to cut onto and that stops the, the brass from distorting. And that bench pin that you can see me working against there, that's a really hard wood. That's quite, it's ideal for this really. So with the parts cut out, I'm just cleaning them up with an emery board. Really straightforward stuff. I'm trying to get rid of the etched cusp mark on the the edges of the material and any of the little nibs where I've cut this away from the fret. Now I won't make you watch me cut all of it, clean all of it up but and at this stage I'm only sort of being half-hearted with it. I shall when it's all assembled and it's all rigid um, I, I shall be a bit more thorough with it but it's nice just to get it cleaned up basically at this stage whilst it's all flat and quite easy to manipulate. So having cut these parts out and cleaned them up, the next job is to have a go at putting some of the rivet detail on. Now I'll give you a little close up of the side of this photograph, but there's quite prominent rivet detail. And on this kit, that those rivets have been half etched. And what we need to do is emboss those so that the they sort of protrude like a snap head rivet. Now in the past, I've always used a scriber for doing this job and just sort of press it down or a small panel pin or anything suitably pointy um, and if you press onto a softish surface it leaves 
whistle embosses those half-etched rivets and they stick out and they look um, quite realistic. However, gone up in the world since then, and this is a George Watts Universal Rivet Press, and this thing really is the business. So we'll have a quick look at this thing, and uh, and, and you can see how it works. It's a really, it's a magical tool, really. Fairly obvious, you've got a, uh, how it works. There's a pointy, uh, what do we call it, like a rivet forming tool, a little die underneath that and you pull the lever and it just presses down into the material and pushes the the rivet shape in. Now this tool comes with a variety of I think it's three different sizes of sort of tool bits that are producing different size rivets depending on what scale you're working in. And you can set everything up really accurately in this kind of like compound slide arrangement um, and there's sort of two hand wheels and you can move the part around in sort of an X and a Y axis. And this is really good for getting your rivets in a nice straight line. Um, it works a treat. And then you just pull the handle down and that's it, sort of press it. That upside down bolt with the nut on, on the right hand side of the tool at the top there, that sets the depth and you can kind of dial this thing in, get it all set up properly. And it just works a treat. And then you can wind a little hand wheel and it's all graduated so you could if you want rivets at a particular spacing you can set them all out really accurately and that's really good it could be quite time consuming to do but it's quite enjoyable now i'm doing this rather awkwardly because i'm working around a camera here you can't see it but the the camera's sort of between my two arms and i'm reaching around so occasionally you'll see the image wobble and that's where i've caught the camera with my arm. Now I must be honest and I find laying out the rivets in this way just a bit too time consuming and it's really unnecessary because in this case the rivets have been half etched into the material. So what I tend to do in this case is I disconnect the compound slide, I do away with that and I just hold the part in my hands and I can kind of feel the, the tool engaging in the half-etched rivet and, and I just hold it and work by hand rather like you see here. So with the bits cut out, cleaned up and rivets embossed with the wonderful George Watts tool, the next thing is to put some folds into these things and turn them from being two-dimensional to 3D. Now I must admit this tool I've got, this sort of folding bar thing is, is brilliant um, and, and well worth the investment. Of course I could be bending this between a couple of bits of wood or something held in a vice but I find this really useful. Now I don't know if what I'm about to do now is frowned upon or not but you'll see me holding it over the edge of my bench pen there, bench pin there and rotating the tool to sort of set the bend and then finish it off up here. That's just how I like to do it. Now you can see I've put a piece of paper in there and that piece of paper is to um, just because I've formed those rivets, the rivets will kind of indent into the paper rather than being squished flat in the tool. So I'm eyeing this up, deciding is this, is this square enough? And it's not quite good enough, so I'm going to pop it back in and tweak that bend a little bit more. Once more, trying to get it really nice. 
Now I could put a square on this and check it, but the eyeball's pretty good. And so with that done, I can sort of repeat the process now and form the other bits. But I just realised there are some footboards there still attached that I didn't cut out. So I'm just going to whip those off quickly so I can still get to them and then we'll form the other bends in exactly the same way Okay, so we're going to switch things up a little bit here and here I'm working on the second of the two sides of the cabin and you see me this occasion I just folded that over my bench pit and you can see we've got this overlay which needs to be soldered onto there this is the part that you saw me embossing the rivets on a little while ago so the first stage in fixing these overlays is to tin the back of the overlay and I'm just doing this here with a soldering iron I'll clean that up and put some flux on this a little bit more so that's quite straightforward and then the next stage of the process I'm going to use a tool called a resistance soldering unit to um, to kind of solder that onto the, the cabin. You, you'll see what I'm going to do in just a second. But I'm going to say up front that I've messed up the filming of this particular segment. So what I'll do is I'll sort of show this again in a little bit more detail. But that thing in my hand that looks a bit like an electric pencil, that is the probe of the resistance soldering unit. And there's kind of like a, an earth lead or a return lead. That in this case here I'm just clamping with my left hand. You place the probe on the job and there's a little foot switch and by pressing the foot switch a current passes through the two electrodes and the resistance creates the heat and the heat melts the solder and puts the two bits together. Now what's quite nice about this as a, as a method is it tends to be quite clean you can get away with using less solder it doesn't all sort of, sort of ooze out and there we go that's the that's the finished job. But I'll show you this again in hopefully a little more detail. And this is one of the buffer beams, an overlay for the buffer beam. And this has been, this had rivets embossed in it too. Now don't do what I'm doing here. I'm tinning the back of this. I'm using my cutting mat. Normally I have a little heat proof pad. I do this on, I don't know why I didn't, um, or I do it on that little wooden bench pin on my, my workbench. Um, I don't advise doing this on the cutting mat, but I'm working quite quickly and it's low temperature solder so I think it's fine. As you can see I just topped up the flux there and try and encourage this to flow a little bit better and there we go with a bit more flux, so it covers quite nicely. So that's the back of the overlay done. What we need to do now is fasten that to the, the sort of the underframe there. So in this case, I've got the chassis of this brake van assembled in my vise. I've got the earth lead or the return lead for the resistance soldering unit is attached to my vise. And I'm just lining this up, checking it by eye, and again you can see the probe tip there of the resistance soldering unit. And when I'm happy that 
that's all in the right place. It's really simple, just place the probe on, push down on the foot switch, and literally you switch it on for a second or something like that. I tend to, once I've released the switch, keep the probe there for a few more seconds just so it can all cool down so it doesn't shift. And yeah, I guess this is a bit like a spot welder in, in many ways. So I'll have a little look at that, clean it up. So that's got kind of two little tacks, but I think it could have a little bit more heat put through it. I don't think that's going to fall off in a breeze, but I'll heat it up and sort of get a bit more solder melting on there. And it's just a case of repeating the process. And once one's set up to do this, it's, it's really quick and really clean and it's quite an enjoyable way of working. Just using the fiberglass pencil there again to, to keep the parts nice and clean and shiny. So the next little thing we're going to have a go at is fitting this sole bar to the or the chassis that's already been constructed. And so I'm just tinning that. Now what you can't see, again I'm working around a camera here, so I'm all a bit fingers and thumbsy here really. My arms are it's like I'm cuddling the camera mount, but there we go. So you saw me flux that up and I just drop a bit of solder on there and create a little solder pad. I shall do the same at the other end and then that will be ready to fasten onto the unit that's already been built and again I'll, I'll use the resistance soldering unit to do that. Yeah, there's lots of different ways of doing this so this is just this is just one way i'm quite certain the comment section will have lots of suggestions from others of different ways of doing it but this works for me now in this case i put it back in the vise can you see the black wire coming out the bottom that's the return lead from the resistance soldering unit so a little bit more flux on those two tabs and then I can offer up the, the sole bar, clip it into place, a bit of a tight fit. Now it looks as though the folded bracket on the end of that sole bar and the buffer beam don't line up. Um, and that's the that's the design of the kit. That's not that I've made it badly. I may well have made it badly, but that's <laughs> that, that's how it's designed to be. And the instructions say to to fill the gap afterwards. I think that could be improved a little bit, but it it is what it is. As I said, this is the second one of these I've put together, and it was the, exactly the same with the first one. So I think there's a bit of making good to do at the end there. So there you go, those solder joints have now been made, really quick and simple. Now having fastened the end of those sole bars to the buffer beams, the next job is to reinforce that joint between the, the cabin floor and the sole bar. And for that I'm just using the usual soldering iron and plenty of flux. And it's clear to me, I'm, I'm narrating this, I'm watching the footage back. The I was talking this through as I was filming it, but the audio wasn't very good, so I'm narrating this after the fact. And looking at this, I think really probably my iron could do with being a little bit hotter. It seemed to work okay at the time, but I, I think it wouldn't hurt for my iron to be just a little bit warmer. Now an alternative for 
doing this would be to chop the solder into little pellets and I very often do that put the flux on drop the pellets into the the seam that I want to to solder and then bring the iron in and, and melt them and let them flow again it's working around the camera here and you sort of do things in ways that maybe I wouldn't have done it if I wasn't filming this but it's doing the job, it's not going to fall apart. It probably doesn't even need the solder, to be honest. Okay, so I'm hoping that it's fairly obvious now what I'm doing here. These are the remaining tabs on the two halves of this unit that are going to assemble together to form the cabin of the brake van and all I'm doing here is tinning those tabs so that I can solder them all together in one nice unit. Now I'm going to gloss over this because I suffered a major disaster. Just as I assembled or tacked the two halves together I then dropped them off my bench and in bending down to pick them up I knocked something off and I I squashed these flat and I had to bend them straight and I got a bit flustered. Anyway, so this video is going to cut to the, the finished assembly all kind of done and I missed the, the section out of the joining them because it all, it all got a bit fraught. So you'll have to imagine what happened there. I've managed to straighten them out sort of reasonably but uh, not perfectly. Anyway, let's get back to just tinning these. Now these tabs, when they fold over, there's a little bit of a gap with the fit up of where the roof goes on. So I'm sticking quite a bit of solder onto these, um, these tabs. Now the solder's not really gonna fill the gap, but I want there to be sufficient that I can um, sort of get a reasonable connection between the two tabs. I wouldn't normally rely on a thick solder joint for mechanical strength, but given that this thing is fastened to the floor of the the wagon it's you know it's, it, it, it'll be fine but I'd rather there was more solder there than not enough and I can always remove some at a later stage if it causes me problems when I fit the roof So then the final sort of sequence for this assembly video is, is just sticking these little trim panels on. So as I said previously, the whole thing's now more or less assembled um, and repaired after my disaster. But I thought I'd show you this again as a, a little bit more action with the resistant soldering unit. So that little end panel, that little detail that sits up there underneath the roof, that's been tinned behind. I'm just going to clamp that there with my tweezers. Get it nice and, and then stick the probe on and get a little tack. Maybe you saw a little puff of smoke there just as the solder was melting. I've taken my foot off the pedal at this point and I'm just holding the probe on just whilst it cools down, but another little tack there. Again, I'm holding it. And one in the middle. Now really, the one in the middle should be the first one to do, because it can, sort of, as, as you solder, the, the heat can cause the brass to expand. 
and push a little curve in it. So I would always recommend starting in the middle. I don't know why I didn't there, but anyway, it's gone on just fine. And so there you have it. That's the basic unit in the progress so far. Still lots of work to do, the white metal details, the roof, and of course the wheel sets haven't been fitted yet either. And we'll get on to all of that in the next episode, which will be part two of this little build. Anyway, until then, I'll leave you with a couple of shots of where we're at, and I thank you very much for watching. Cheerio.